Hey guys, Mac here. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through all of the gear that we have to document life on the road and to create videos much like our most recent series, A Summer Adrift. As those episodes started rolling out, we started to get a lot of questions about all of the gear that we have to make those videos possible. So I'm very excited to finally be sharing all of the nitty gritty details with you. Not only will we be talking about the gear that we have know and love, I also at the end will talk you through some of the things that we wished we had. All right, let's talk some gear. Before we dive in, this video is brought to you by our friends over at Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community featuring thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people such as yourselves. I mean, you're watching this video, right? I can tell you're hungry for knowledge. I personally have been using Skillshare for years to help develop new interests. For instance, in the past, I've used it to learn new techniques for illustration, photo and video editing, and I actually have a whole bunch of classes saved to perfect the skills of voiceover. Most recently, I took the class Outdoor Photography by Chris Burkhard. He's a huge inspiration for Owen and I, so it's really cool to be able to take classes directly from people who we look up to. So hopefully we can soak up a little bit of their knowledge along the way. The first thousand people to use the link in the description of this video will get a free trial of a Skillshare premium membership. After that, it's only around $10 a month. And I'll say it, $10 a month is a small price to pay when you're investing in yourself. Owen and I both shoot on the Sony a7 III. This is an amazing jack-of-all-trades camera body. Sony also makes the a7R, which is going to be more of their high-resolution photo camera, as well as the a7S, which is going to be more of their video-centric camera. We like the a7 III because it falls nicely in between the two of those. It produces great image quality at 24 megapixels, and it's great for shooting video as well as time lapses. The a7 III also has in-body stabilization, which helps smooth out the inherent shakiness that comes with handheld footage. Even though this camera is limited to 30 frames per second at 4K, we think that it more than makes up for it in the actual video quality. And of our entire camera setup, this guy takes the best footage. Sony also makes a ton of amazing lenses for their camera bodies, but we will get to that in a second. As of right now, the Sony a7 III is actually a really great deal because it's a few years old and they've come out with a couple new camera bodies since then. Drones give us a perspective that no other camera can. We love capturing landscapes and getting shots of us driving. The sense of scale that a drone creates is amazing, and we really feel like it ups the quality of our videos. We've been using the Mavic Air 2 for about a year now, and it's a great little travel drone. It can shoot at 60 frames per second at 4K, which is really nice for creating that cinematic slow motion. We love having and using a GoPro because they're compact and waterproof. We find that we use them quite a bit on backpacking trips and hikes because it's super compact and doesn't take up a lot of space in our packs. GoPros also make it very easy to shoot time lapses, of which we shoot a lot of from the dash of our truck, as well as in the backcountry when our other cameras are being used for stills. The other feature that we love about GoPros is the slow motion. They have the ability to shoot 240 frames per second in 1080p, but because we edit our videos in 24 frames per second, that means that we're able to slow down the footage to 10%. At some point this summer, our GoPro got a crack in it, and so it's actually no longer waterproof, but we'll have more on that later. The Osmo Pocket is the unsung hero of our Summer Adrift series. Because it's lightweight, we carried it with us everywhere. I had it with us on just about every backpacking trip and every hike, and it actually goes on to live in my purse so I can have it ready at a moment's notice. The gimbal works wonders at stabilizing footage that's taken while driving or walking. The Osmo Pocket's gimbal also allows for some really cool features such as time lapses and hyperlapses. 
For being such a compact camera, I do feel that the internal microphone is really good on the Osmo Pocket, making it perfect for talking and walking shots like this. Like the drone, the Osmo can shoot in 4K60 and has a similar color science, which makes color correction a breeze. The only issue we've ever had with the Osmo Pocket is that at some point over the summer, the focus did get knocked out of whack. To fix it, it only required a factory reset of all of the settings. And in my opinion, that's a small price to pay for the amount of work this little guy puts in. If you're looking for an affordable entry-level camera for shooting video, I would say that the Osmo Pocket would probably be one of our top recommendations. This lens is our biggest workhorse. At 16 to 35, it's great for landscapes or taking interior shots. And I would say that those are the two cases that we find that we use it the most. And in the event that we can only take one lens, this always seems to be the one that we grab. This lens also has image stabilization, which is really nice for smoothing out our footage. This one may end up overtaking our 16 to 35 as our most used lens. At 24 millimeters, it's wide enough to shoot most of what we could possibly need. And we have the added bonus of going all the way to 70 millimeters. From a focal length standpoint, this is our most versatile lens that we have. At a continuous f2.8, it's great for shooting in low light. The only drawback is that this guy is kind of big, bulky, and heavy, which makes it not super fun to hike with. This lens was a bit of a splurge. It's actually what we're shooting on right now, but I really do feel like it's my favorite lens. At f1.4, it's our go-to lens for anything at night, be it photos, time lapses, or video. And it makes everything look so nice and so sharp, don't you think? Good sound is important for upping the quality of our videos. How do I know? Well, we've dealt with a lot of really bad audio over the years. Life on the road is never gonna give us studio quality sound. So having a good versatile microphone is really important for maximizing and getting the most out of any situation we could find ourselves in. We have the Rode VideoMic Pro. This is a shotgun style mic, which means that it takes the most of its audio from directly where it is pointed at. It's perfect for us because our cameras are typically going to be pointed at the source of the audio that we're trying to capture. We also use this little mic for recording our voiceovers. Tripods are great for shooting time lapses, static shots, or when shooting with a longer focal length because the footage just gets too shaky. We use tripods for just about all of our videos, including this one, because unfortunately Owen cannot hold the camera this still. No offense, Owen. All right, I'll come out and say it. We don't have a very good tripod. We only actually have this one because it's cheap and it was lightweight. Until summer adrift, we only used a tripod sparingly, but the more we started shooting, the more flaws we found it had. The problem is with this tripod is it's actually too light, and it became evident any time there was even the slightest breeze while we were trying to shoot because our footage started to have little movements in it. Later in this video, I will tell you what we're hoping to upgrade to in the future. I also kind of feel bad talking so much shit about a tripod as it sits in front of me and is doing its job. <laughs> the Gorillapod is a great camera accessory because you can use it to strap your camera to just about anything. We typically will keep our GoPro attached to it most of the time because you can then use this as a handle or you could strap it to a tree for a time lapse. It's lightweight and goes everywhere the GoPro does. We recently upgraded to the stronger Gorillapod after realizing that our smaller one couldn't support the weight of some of our larger cameras. This one is still very hiking friendly, but now we know that it can support the weight of our largest camera. We really enjoy time lapses. We started experimenting with them a couple of years ago and Owen instantly fell in love. So to take our time lapses, to the next level, we got this Syrup Genie Mini 2. 
This little device attaches to a tripod and then pans at controllable speeds to capture more dynamic video and time lapses. We find ourselves using it more and more these days for our regular video as well. It's just a really nice tool for getting really dynamic B-roll. The device is easily controlled using the Syrup app and is so much fun to play with. We have this handy little Zoom H1N for recording our voiceovers. It has a few different controls on it, so you can dial in to all of your levels. It is the most basic recorder by Zoom, but it does get the job done for us. Owen and I used to hike with our cameras around our neck. Then we suffered for 220 miles on the John Muir Trail with bruised tips and chafed necks. So we decided enough was enough. Now we have the Peak Design camera clip. We avoided buying these camera clips for a long time because they're expensive, but we're total converts now. They make carrying your camera comfortable and easily accessible when you're hiking, and it's quickly become one of our favorite camera accessories. For those who are on a budget, there are knockoff versions out there that are cheaper, but we personally cannot speak to the quality of them. Storing and protecting our gear out on the road is just as important as having it in the first place. And for that, we have a number of Pelican cases to protect everything. Since using these cases, our gear has experienced far less wear and tear than it did before. And before was just a big old pile of stuff in the backseat of the truck. Not a good system. I don't recommend it. We love the different types of dividers that are available so you can completely customize the interior of your case to work perfectly for what you will be carrying inside of them. Just like the Pelican cases, it's important to have a good way of storing and protecting your footage. For archiving, we use five terabyte lacy rugged drives. They come with a little rubberized exterior to protect them from any little tumbles. They aren't particularly fast, but for archiving, they do get the job done. For projects that we're actively working on, we use SanDisk solid state drives. They're way faster than the Lacy's, which makes them nice for working on video projects. Currently, the largest size that SanDisk makes is two terabytes. So in that way, it is a little limiting. Us personally, we've never had a project exceed that. But when we're done with the project, we'll then archive them onto the Lacy's, clear the sand disks, and prepare them for the next project. As far as SD cards go, we don't have strong feelings about any one in particular. We typically get the Lexar Professional cards that have fast enough writing speeds to work with the highest quality video our cameras can shoot. After hearing what we had to say about our tripod, I'm sure you're not surprised that we're on the market for a better one. We'd love to pick up the Peak Design Travel Tripod because it has a ton of really cool features while still being lightweight and strong. As much as we love that tripod, it is a little bit expensive, so before we pick that one up, we will have to do a little bit of saving. We've been wanting to pick up a longer focal length lens for some time now. Specifically, we're looking at the Tamron 70-180 f2.8. A longer focal length lens would give us the ability to record far off wildlife, distant landscapes, and even some moonshots. There were a lot of occasions this summer where we really wished that we had this little guy. We've unfortunately had a lot of issues with drones over the years. I don't know, like I, I can't. Our Mavic Air gave us countless headaches with gimbal errors, and our first Mavic Air 2 this summer totally disappeared when it should have been returning to home. Now that we're wading into higher production value videos, we're really wanting to upgrade our drone to the Mavic Pro 2. Despite the Pro 2 actually being older than the Air 2, of which we have, we found that the Pro 2 actually has better quality video, particularly in tough lighting situations. Wow, that's a mouthful. Once our GoPro got a crack in the screen over the summer, it's kind of been downhill for it. It is no longer waterproof. And the last time it took a dip in the water, it took days for the screen to get any sort of functionality again. Even when our GoPro is working, the touchscreen still isn't very responsive. So we've had to resort to changing any of the settings 
in the app. And without it being waterproof, the GoPro's lost a good bit of its draw for us. So we're hoping to upgrade to a new GoPro in the near future. You know, one that's waterproof. That covers all of the equipment that we carry with us out here on the road to make our videos. I know it kind of seems like a lot, but it's gear that we've collected over time, and we clearly still have a couple of holes that we would like to fill. We really hope that you enjoyed this video. In the near future, we will also be releasing a video detailing all of the photo equipment that we carry. There will be a little bit of overlap in that video, but we'll also go into our analog camera setup. If you're interested in any of the links to the gear that we've discussed today, those will live in the description of this video down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you down the road. Lens has stabilization tend to grab, but as well as the A7S, is that right? Mm -hmm. Damn it. Sing. Mm, no, sorry. See it, time lapses. Blech. Wiki, 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 wiki. It helps. It feels so silly to start with it up here, but I do get it. I'm doing it on like every shot. Here. Using a pelican case. No, that's not what's next. As far as SD cards are concerned, no. Living in the link. Nope. The curse. The curse of the outro.